right, welcome to the third and final review of the evening as we delve into the Red Solstice. Um, gonna have to preface this one. Um, this is gonna be, I'd say, a um, a limited review of the Red Solstice, and that is because this is a uh, squad-based tactical strategy game, which means uh, there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, uh, there is a multiplayer mode that I did not get the chance to play um, because we only got one code, and by the time I found out Twilight Winter ha- purchased the game on his own, yeah, it was too late to do any sort of multiplayer. Um, since I learned about that before we uh, just before we started doing the reviews tonight. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, and... You know, it is kind of a disservice to this uh, game because it's got a very, you know, it's got a very um, robust multiplayer mode, uh, a up to eight uh, player uh, tactical squad over uh, on six maps. Um, mind you, even if we had the full crew here and all, all the codes, we could only do the four. We could only do four players. Um, still, I think that would be enough to test that out. Um, but the point of the, the point of order here is um, nobody here experienced the multiplayer, which is a big component of the game. Um, but uh, so, uh, and another thing is this game uh, uh, touts a thirty-hour campaign over ten missions. I was only able to complete four. Um, because it's you know it's been a busy week you know um, and all that stuff so I can't say that I can give this review a great in-depth uh, analysis that some other reviewers might be able to do but you know that's never stopped us before and you know we do have obligations anyway as mentioned, this game, it, it's kind of a unique beast, actually, um, as it's a it's a squad-based tactical strategy game, but it's, um, it's less XCOM and more um, tower defense, or that, that is to say, it, it's a lot more linear, and it's real-time. Um, so... You're not planning out moves. You're not worrying about move meter. You know, it's like you're not worried about that kind of uh, tactical. Um, but the inter- but the other interesting thing is it, this game also tries to be a turn-based uh, strategy game. I know that sounds weird, but uh, what this game does is it's got a um, slowdown mode. Um, you know, uh, you hit the button and the game goes in, you know, it goes into, uh, slowdown and that's where you can make, um, more turn-based tactical decisions. It's not actually turn-based, you know, you will still move, um, enemies will still move, things will still happen even in this mode, but, you know, things are slowed down enough where you can pause and you know you're gonna be primarily doing this to um flank out your team because um in real time mode more often than not you're gonna be moving the squad as a squad um and you will shift to the slow uh, you know the slow mode in order to position your characters um, at various points. And, uh, th- like, there are various waypoints where you have to do this. Mm-hmm. It is it is a consideration of the game. Um, especially since... Uh, um, sometimes it isn't, though. Sometimes it's actually better to just um, weather the storm because a lot of this game's um, tactics are around... Regenerating monsters. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and 
you know, your various missions are to, like, you know, clear them out, or um, there, there's kind of different levels of monsters, mm -hmm. like the you know, the tougher creatures will come from nests that you um, use sonic devices to destroy, and you're probably, and, and you're going to want to uh, eliminate those, because um, I'll be honest, I found this game to be a slog at points. And that is, that is by design as well. Like, mm -hmm. um, there mm -hmm. are um, branches, like not nece not necessarily missions. Like, each missions can be like divided into about like three or four sub missions, um, and you know some of them are just you know to get from point A to point B and survive, and you know you you're just surviving a meat grinder onslaught mm -hmm. and got to admit I didn't particularly enjoy those um, those uh, you know segments mainly because you know that's that's not strategy that's you know endurance yeah 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 um, that was my uh, biggest problem with the game. Yeah, it was mine too. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, as um, the single player mode is is a full campaign mode. Uh, there is a story here, uh, a, and the name the Red Solstice. This is actually a storm on Mars. Like. Um, you're like the last survivors of a um, shipwreck, I think, if I'm remembering correct. Or no, it, yeah. it's like y'all made landfall, and uh, there was some catastrophe that happened, and you know you're trying to deal with um, with these storms are bad, okay? Um, you know you're trying to get the communications up, but it may have been corrupted, um, all that stuff. Yeah, you're a group of um, space marines there to save a uh, politician or something like that, I believe. Uh, something like, you know, it's like, uh, as you can tell, we weren't paying too much to the story. Yeah. Like, um, uh, but let me see. Uh, yeah, th there are eight classes of Marines. Uh, it's like when you first start, like, uh, you play as, uh, like Captain Tyler and three very generic runs. It's not until, like, you move to the second team, you get into more specialized fields. Like, you know, you get your medic and you get your defense and, you know, the different classes have different um, powers. You know, like the medic, they will be able to, you know, they'll heal you. They'll um, uh, cure your status ailments. Mm -hmm. weirdly, enough, weirdly enough, that's also the class that can get rid of the smaller regenerators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's just still weird to me. Um and of course, these special powers have a cooldown period, and there are more generalized uh, spe special uh, things like a personal flare, a a sprint mode, and uh, various buffs remember what like a critical hit booster and whatnot. No, no, I'm trying to remember the third. Uh, oh. It was like a power knife. Oh yeah, the, I don't think I ever used that. The energy blade or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I'm I never like, used it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like I used uh, like the uh, I used the character specific stuff. Um, like overkill was pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, also, a lot of the actual combat is automated, or hmm. can be automated. You can actually turn that on and off. I'd recommend turn like the game recommend turn. Turn, uh, turning it on, you know that is until you get to the fucking lizards that have to be manually targeted. Once again, that was just fucking bullshit, mm -hmm. and a and a bit a bit of bad game design. Like, especially because, uh, good god, the, just the unrelenting monsters. Yeah, the unrelenting horde. <laughs> I mean. I get that what this game was going for, but no, I, it's like I, you know, it's there like there is a point where it's it gets like too if much. I wanted to play, 
it's like honestly, I uh, I felt like I was playing a tower defense game mm. at that point. There's points where you're just gonna be standing your ground and hoping you can slowly inch your way forward. <laughs> anyway, um, as a tactical strategy game, like uh, it's actually fairly light. Like you know, it, it's nowhere in depth uh, of a you know. A, like an actual turn-based uh, strategy game, or, you know, or something grander where you're, you know, like a shining force or a fire emblem, you know. Um, but it is deeper than, say, you know, an actual tower defense game, you know. Um, or you could consider this like a cut-down, focused RTS game, you know. Um, once again, it's not going to have the depth of, say, Command & Conquer or um, Warcraft, and on and on, but that's not, that's not the point. You know, it, this is about controlling a squad. And, you know, it's like, truth be told, I've never actually seen a game mesh um, this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of uh, genre blending before. You know, does it succeed? Um, uh, somewhat. You know, but it's like, Uh, if I wanted to play a, a, you know, it sometimes wants to be a turn-based tactical game, and it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really pull that off because it, it it's never turn-based, you know. But it wants to have that, uh, it wants to have the stra- strategic flexibility there. You know, interesting conceit, um, so-so execution. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in terms of graphics uh, and audio, um, everything was fine. Like, it, it's very gritty, though. You know, it's very dark, um, except for all the neon colors. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know um, and it's all played fairly ser- uh, seriously. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. Anyway, pricing. Um so this game clocks in at ten dollars usually, although um, during the Steam sale it's coming in at uh, three ninety nine. Uh, that's the baseline though, um, because it's got DLC. Uh, it's got the soundtrack, which is uh, four dollars normally. Um, let's see, it's you got the Red Solstice Armory Pack, which uh, let's see, uh, looks like this is a. Um, this is uh, additional, uh, let's see, 10 helmets equipped by any class, two new weapon variants, new sector, residential sector. Okay, and the operations pack. So, uh, let's see, this brings two new missions and two new weapons to the Red Solstice. Uh, so you've got some, so you've got some actual meaty uh, DLC for a game like this. Uh, let's see. They all cl- let's. Uh, the soundtrack is three ninety nine. The ar- armory pack is two ninety nine. The operations pack is three ninety nine. Um, and there are some bundles here as well. There's the because this is the first in the red um, solstice universe, I suppose. Because th- there's a spinoff game called the Solstice Chronicles. I don't know what that is because I. I didn't look into it, admittedly. Um, and there's the gold edition, which in, wh- um, the gold edition is all of the DLC and this game bundled together. So you've actually got two different bundles here. It's like if you want both the chronic, uh, both the Red Solstice games, you've got uh, the Red Solstice Universe bundle, which usually clocks in at twenty nine ninety eight. But this is 76% off, so it's uh, $7.18. Mm-hmm. Um, and the gold edition is um, $20.96, but this is clocking in at $7.56. So even if you bought both bundles at this particular moment in time, um, it would be cheaper than just like buying one of these normally. I mean, um, so... Grading on normal levels here, um, you know the base game being worth it. Um, 
I'd say yes. Um, you know, it's a bit thin. You know, it, it's a bit thin in terms of uh, strategic um, depth uh, mm-hmm. compared to you know aforementioned examples. But you know, as a focused strategy game, yeah, the, I'd say ten dollars is good. Mm-hmm. Um, can't really comment on the DLC though, since. Um, I only got the baseline code here, I think. Hmm. Um, and as far as the packs themselves, well, at the Steam sale price, sure, go nuts. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I would, I would probably recommend only buying one of these at normal price, um, since, you know, or, you know, it's like. Uh, or buy the gold pack and then buy the um, Solstice Chronicles MIA uh, thing by itself because that's what's really inflating the price of it. Because looking at this game, this clocks in at twenty dollars normally and four ninety nine. Um, uh, it's an it is another strategy game, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, yeah. And apparently just came to the Nintendo Switch. Well then. All right. Um, But yeah, can't really speak about that since that's not the game we're reviewing. Um, As far as the the original Red Solstice. Um, Yeah. uh, I I give it a 7 out of 10. Like, it's a solid strategy game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. But it's like... If you can deal with its grind. Yeah. Yeah, if you can handle the slowly making your way through the horde of monsters you face, it's not bad. Yeah. Mind you, yeah, mind you this only applies to the single player mode. Yeah. Because uh, we cannot speak to the multiplayer. But um, it looks like the like it looks like the multiplayer mode may, uh, is the mode to really play, yeah. really sink your teeth to. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if you have, you know, buddies to play with. Um, you know, just as a rule, like, in general, I don't play with strangers, but this is a game I really wouldn't want to play with fucking strangers. Indeed. Because, <laughs> it's a, because it is a strategy game. Like, it is a squad-based strategy game. So you kind of need, you know, all the people to be on the same wavelength. <laughs> and it's kind of you know, hard to do that... Um, with strangers, not impossible, but you know, it's more uh, trouble than it's worth. Let's just say. Yeah, I've got some memories. <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for the fragments of silicon reviews for the week. Um, the week ahead, coming up on July third, we'll be having Michael Hahn and William Phelps of Quarter Onion Games. Um, we'll be talking about Ember Light. If you recall, we did a preview video of that game uh, just last week. Uh, they have listened to the feedback we gave them, and they are adjusting some things. Um, you know, it's like uh, what, like from what I remember from the email, uh, like the core of the game's done, but you know they are still polishing things up because this game is still about a month. Uh, and a half away from launch. Uh, and coming up on Friday, July 5th in the morning, um, we will be having Gabor uh, Sutorias. Sute- uh, Sute- you know, it's like a foreign name. So, it's probably got mangled. Of Lost Pilgrim Studio. We will be um, talking about a interesting role-playing game called uh, Vargaris, where you are the leader of a caravan, hmm. and yeah, it's like and uh, you know your mission is to well get the caravan to you know the places and you know make sure it survives. So it's kind of like um, Oregon Trail. More Darkest Dungeon, actually. Oh. I'm like... 
I've seen some footage. Like, no, seriously. The, like, the combat, uh, it's very Darkest Dungeon. Hmm. Like, uh, you know, the, the whole game is very, very, like, pen and paper role-playing game. Uh-huh. Um, you know, a lot of descriptions, a lot of text. You know, you got to admit, I wasn't watching the whole time because a game like this is very dry to watch. Um, especially when people are reading text. Um, yeah, that's not a fault. You know, that's not a fault of the game. It's just, you know, it's not. You know, it, watching a person reading text is not is not particularly interesting. Um, but anyway, so that's what's coming up this week. Um, until Wednesday, I shall wish you good gaming.